Welcome to His and Hers Podcast, episode number 10. I am your host, but don't suspect me as a psychopath. I swear I'm not JP, podcasting out of southwestern Pennsylvania. And joining me tonight, as always, is my second in command, the B-O-M, that is Buddy of Monsters, Carly, podcasting out of southwestern Pennsylvania as well. What is up? I'm the buddy. <laughs> um, not much, not much. Um, just, you know, got over being sick finally, so it's been kind of an annoying few days. But, like I said, I'm over it now and uh, ready to move on. But, uh, yeah, so not much has really been going on. How about you? I didn't hear what you said. You said not much is going on? You're no. You're like not sick anymore. You got no. rid of the coronavirus. Um, that I didn't have that, no. Yes, you did. No, I did not. That's why I was avoiding you. I am sick of hearing about this virus. I feel like we are in an infected movie where if you cough or sneeze or anything, everyone looks at you weird and wants to throw you in a tube by yourself. And I'm tired of it. And I'm healthy now. So I did not have it. Mm. End of story. Are you sure? Yeah, 100. Alright, um, yeah, so... We are back again for another review. This time we will re- be reviewing M O M, aka Mothers of Monsters, which got a short, I believe, like mild theatrical release, um, like super low level, limited release. Um, but I have gotten a screener of it before its uh, official wide release on VOD. Uh, So we decided we didn't have a theatrical film this week, although we did see a theatrical film this week, but we kind of like to headline the shows with horror movies, so um, we did see something um, we saw Onward, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, But yeah, so we didn't have anything major this week, so we decided to go uh, with this film, uh, which we have done before with After Midnight. Mm -hmm. Uh, So yeah, Um, kind of a shorter week uh, recording. Uh, so I don't have a ton of stuff that I watched, but let's just start with how was your last few days? How was your week? When did we record last? Was it last? When? Tuesday? I or? don't even remember. Probably. I'd say it's been about a week. Um. So yeah, like I said, I was pretty much, uh, I got sick on Friday. So my whole weekend, I was just laying around sick. I ended up watching like, a grand total of six or seven movies within those, uh, you know, two and a half, I worked on Friday, so like two and a half days, so that's kind of how I spent my weekend. Other than that, just been working like usual, nothing too exciting, um, and yeah, being sick sucked. I don't have the coronavirus, though, um, I promise, and that is that. How about you? What have you been up to? Oh, let's see, um, started a new job, which I've talked about, um, was finishing out my old job, and they told me not to come back, which I thought was kind of rude, but, you know, um, so just wait in to fully start the new job tomorrow, and then I'll be, like, full-time again. Uh, what else did we do this week? So, I guess the only thing, I guess really the main thing that we did was um i went to the fights on saturday Mm -hmm. which was really fun um good good time there and then on yesterday we hung out for a bit we went to uh get food um and then we messed around and went to a couple of stores i bought a really cool hat that everybody hates i also bought a hat (laughs) <laughs> How do you feel as a hat owner? Pretty pretty powerful, actually. Really? Yeah. I don't really wear hats. That's never really been my thing. Mainly because, like, I always found them to be a bit itchy. And also, if you ever have to take it off, your hair looks disgusting. So I never really, you know, just wore a hat. But now that I own a hat, I'm going to wear that hat. Because it's a pretty cool hat. It's a Friday the 13th. Uh, hat. Uh, pretty basic. It just has, like, the mask on it and 13, and underneath it says Fear Friday on the, you know, whatever you call that lid cap part, whatever. Flap. 
thingy. I don't know the hat bill. terminal. The bill, yeah, hat terminology. Um, so, yeah, I am pretty pleased with my hats. I would never have bought a hat typically, but anytime I'm with you, I end up buying dumb stuff, and here we are. But it's not dumb. I like it. It's a nice hat. If it was just a regular old Steelers hat or something, obviously that would be dumb because I don't care about that. But um, yeah, and I think your hat is pretty dope, despite the naysayers. Yeah, some people just don't like that much stuff going on on a hat, but I thought it was Understand. pretty cool um, yeah. because it's a hat of the of the Nightmare on Elm Street three Dream Warriors poster, which I think is cool. Um, I dig it. I I mess with it. See, the reason people don't like hats like that sometimes is they can't pull them off it's like they're too flashy they don't like being all that flashy but you know i could do it so whatever Mm -hmm. um yeah and then we went and seen onward which we'll talk about in a moment but yeah pretty quiet week honestly um haven't done a, a whole lot i'm actually starting to stress a little bit because i need to watch like a ton of movies for patreon like a ton and uh we record that show in like two days so uh i gotta record this and then get on that and then uh start start rolling so with that said why don't we go into what we watched over this past week sounds good to me do you want me to start sure all right um Yeah, like I said, um, I pretty much did all my watching over the weekend, Um, and uh, I guess first up here, we have, I rewatched Confessions of a Serial Killer from 85, Um, that was one of those ones that I watched and I thought was pretty cool, but I didn't remember a whole lot about, so I wanted to revisit it, and um, it is essentially a story that is based off of Henry Lee Lucas, although they give it they have different character names for these characters. It's not like a total going by, you know, the real names. I believe his name is like David Smith or something basic like that in the movie. But um, and it, it's essentially it's kind of like Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, but it's told in a way where uh, Henry or David or whatever has been captured. Uh, by the police and he's being interrogated and the whole movie keeps going from him being interrogated to flashbacks to events that happened that eventually led up to his arrest, uh, the different killings that he did and then it kind of uh, the final one is like a big kind of turns into more movie form where you're seeing it all play out and then that's what led to his arrest so um, yeah I like this movie I think it's pretty good um, you know an overlooked one because obviously Henry Portrait of the Serial Killer is uh, the one that most people know when it comes to this particular killer but um, I dig this movie I think uh, the guy who portrays him does pretty good job and uh, there's just very eerie music to play throughout the whole thing it's uh, very creepy um, it feels like a crime TV show in a way more than a movie um, You know, the quality I watch this on is not very good quality, unfortunately. I would love to see this movie in, like, you know, Blu-ray awesome quality because I feel like you could get a lot more out of it that way. And, like I said, it's a good, interesting movie. Um, So it would be nice to see it like that. But uh, it's very eerie and um, very well done. Uh, Just the way, uh, you know, main dude kind of delivers his lines is really creepy and... um, you know, he's just like a murderer. He says stuff like, oh, you know, I've been killing for years. I can't see myself not killing. Like, it's just a hobby. So, um, overall, I really, um, I dig this movie. I dig it a lot. You've seen this one, correct? Yep. It's like, uh, more of a, uh, it's like, it's kind of cool. It's like more of the other side of the story of Henry. So mm-hmm. it's like it's kind of a cool little companion piece with Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer from um, '86. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's I I like it. Um, I liked it a lot. I would actually like to own that little bootleg that you have there too because I don't I, I don't own it. Yeah, I mean that's what sucks. So it's like so low quality, like VHS, it's VHS looking quality. Yeah, so it's kind of sucks. I would like to see it in better format, but um, good movie. Then after that. Um, I watched Alien Covenant again Did because you really? I was yeah. gonna watch that the other night. I have it on um, 4K. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's weird. Um, yeah, you know that movie. I just kind of threw it on. It was like on top of my Blu-ray stack, and I figured, why not? Um, we saw that one in the theater, obviously, and uh, 
Uh, when we saw it in the theater, I really wasn't too into it, honestly. The Alien movies in general, I'm not a huge fan of. I've only seen, like, the first four anyway. And, and Prometheus. I just haven't seen, like, the Alien vs. Predator films, I guess. But, um, yeah, it's it's actually not that bad. Um, it, it, you know, I was into it in certain parts, but uh, I just don't like space movies, I've come to find. I think they're boring. I think that... They all feel like the same thing. I mean, I guess slashers and all the movies that I like feel like the same thing too. But these, this is just a lot of the same thing that I'm not into. Um, just the different terminology and things they're saying. I'm like, I have no idea what you're freaking saying. And I don't care that much and blah, blah, blah. But overall, it's not that bad. Um, the effects are more, you know, CG. But sometimes they look decent with the alien. There's one scene in particular that I actually thought, oh, that actually doesn't look too bad um it's bloody and looks all right but uh you know overall i think it's kind of a little bit generic i don't love it um but i didn't think it was horrible either i I gave that one a seven just for the record but um wasn't as bad as i was i was expecting to throw it on and completely ignore it but i was actually into it in certain aspects but then after that i actually rewatched um krampus you know great time of year to watch that um because you say you? Yeah, I can't stand watching stuff that Christmassy out of Christmas season. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to rewatch it because uh, Austin actually bought me that for Christmas, and it was right after we had watched it. Like, it was like a few days after you, me, and like our friend Matt had watched it over at his house, and he bought me it on Blu ray, so I th- thought, um,. Might as well rewatch it because, you know, watching it in a group setting, you don't always pay extremely close attention, but I knew I liked it and I wanted to pay more attention to it, and uh, I liked it again. I think it's a good Christmas horror movie. It's got uh, some good comedic moments that are blended into it. The um, only thing I don't really care for is, like, the whole animated element she got going with it. Um, to me, it's just a little bit jarring to see that stuff kind of come out of nowhere in a movie that's obviously not animated but um overall i think it's good i think the look of krampus is actually really creepy too especially when you're like seeing him up close at the end so um fun characters as well um then after that i watched rewatched another 85 movie that i didn't remember at all this is also a bootleg i had picked up and that is uh the ripper um oh i need to borrow that off you i still never seen that okay yeah you can borrow that one um once again bootleg so not great quality at all but um it's a weird one. It's it's like Tom Savini's The Ripper. They make it seem like Tom Savini's the star when in reality he doesn't even come in until the very ending. But, um, you know, essentially that one's about uh, you got like this high school teacher or uh, I think it's college actually. Um, and, you know, he's a teacher. He's teaching people like about killers and stuff and The Ripper is kind of like the main thing. And then there happens to be what seems to be a copycat ripper it's either that or some guy who believes he really is jack the ripper kind of going around killing people on the campus so um you know it's essentially kind of like a slasher um it's uh it's not bad Uh, some of the acting's a little weird some of some of it's a little bit um i guess cheesy in a way but uh it's got cool elements to it and i actually enjoyed it more this time around because the first time um i paid attention to it enough actually because rewatching it this time i thought i'm not gonna remember any of this but um I actually remembered pretty much the entire thing, but uh, it, it's an interesting one for sure. I think you might like it. Again, I would like to see it on better quality, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, but after that, I watched Return to Oz, another 85 movie, uh, more fantasy kid movie, but it's actually labeled horror uh, in most aspects. And this is essentially the sequel to Wizard of Oz, years and years and years, like 40 five or something ridiculous like that years later but um and you know this one follows dorothy again and her family kind of thinks she's a little nutty for believing in oz and they're like that that was just a dream so they take her to this weird bizarro clinic uh to kind of help her and um she winds up back in the land of oz and is trying to fix things once again because uh something has gone wrong there once again and um kind of a different story has different characters in it and uh, i enjoyed it it was weird it was uh i could see why it's labeled horror because a lot of the effects and just the look of uh the different characters are super uh creepy and just bizarre uh the whole movie is very bizarre it goes very um over the top with the fantasy elements but 
I dug it. Um, Dorothy obviously is played by a much younger girl, which is a little bit, uh, once again, jarring because, like, it's supposed to be a sequel. And Dorothy in the first one is 16. In this one, she's probably, like, 12 years old. So, you know, it's just kind of a weird thing they did there. But I, I understand they did it for the sake of the story. But I like that one as well. Um, I had never seen it before, so that was cool. Um, then I watched another 85 movie again, and that is just A Nightmare on Elm Street 2. I didn't feel like watching anything. Um, uh, you know, I just wanted to take a break and watch something that was familiar to me. I love A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, I've come to find. Um, probably my favorite one. It's the one that's, like, the most different from all the other ones in the Nightmare series, which I'm not a huge fan of, um, as people know. But um, I like part two. I think it's fun. It uses the most cheesy, basic 80s slasher vibe to me, and I think that's why I enjoy it. I just, those are the types of movies I like. I like this one. I like the effects in it. Um, it's got some kind of gross-out effects, in my opinion, and I think Freddy's actually really dark in it. The whole pool party scene is great. Um, the uh, scene at the beginning with the bus I really like as well, so um, overall, I dig the movie. I think it's a pretty good movie. Then after that, I've watched, and finally, another 85 movie. These were almost all 85 movies, um, and that was Godzilla 1985, um, yeah, another Godzilla movie, I'm not, I've come to find I'm not a huge fan of Godzilla films from just the few I have seen, to me, I feel like, from what I've seen, they're all kind of the same thing, it's like, people sitting around, and then all of a sudden, it's like, oh my god, Godzilla's back, and then the whole movie is just a bunch of scientists and government people and stuff trying to figure out how are we going to take Godzilla down and that's kind of the whole gist of the story while Godzilla just screws up the whole town uh but I actually got into this movie more than I thought I would um I Godzilla I think is actually pretty menacing and scary looking although um they dropped the ball with his actual face it looks ridiculous uh it looks super fake the eyes are just huge and it just looks really silly but from far away he's actually really scary much like king kong um just watching him kind of walk through the town and destroy everything is terrifying if you know if you were to actually see that in real life that would be pretty scary so um i did dig that element to it i just feel like story-wise there's not all that much to these films from like the three i've seen but uh you know wasn't too bad i had fun with it so that is it. That is all I have watched this week. How about you, JP? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I barely watched anything this week. Um, so first up, I did watch a... Uh, I mentioned Wicked City last week. I did finish that. Um, mm. It is a movie that actually is pretty good. Um, it's an anime horror film, um, and it follows this basically like uh, a detective type dude um, who uh, there's like there's like two sides to like the world right it's like there's this underworld thing and then this um, like the regular human world uh, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> he teams up with this girl who is part of like this underworld it's called the black world I couldn't remember the thing of it um, and uh, she is like part, she was part of that world and um, they are like trying to basically protect this guy and like form like a, there was like a treaty that separated the supernatural world from like the regular world and um, basically they are trying to like protect and get the, the treaty like re-signed or something like that and then everybody's trying to like the, the dark world it's trying to stop them or something it's kind of political a little bit but um what's really cool is just like the visuals it's it's a very cool um dark it's dark and i love like the sit like the, the the movie opens up with like this cool like cityscape and um this dude picks up this girl and she turns into a damn like spider woman demon thing and her vagina turns into teeth and stuff and there's like tons of nudity in this which is funny because it's you know animated and like there's this girl there's a scene where this woman gets like captured by a bunch of demons and like raped with tentacles um pretty crazy actually uh but yeah overall um it's it's ve it's actually re very good I, I this might be one of my favorite animes that i've seen i've seen a couple now um vampire hunter d uh 
perfect blue, which is probably the best. Um, Akira. So a couple couple of around this territory. I like I, I like everything I've seen so far, but like I'm scared to say that because I feel like more people are gonna give them to me for Patreon <laughs> on 22 shots. So because <laughs> I never feel like watching them. But yeah, yeah so sure. I watched Wicked City, <clears throat> finished it. It was good. I gave it like a seven and a half out of ten. Cool. Um, what the heck else did I watch? Sorry, I'm a little bit unprepared right now. Uh, then, oh yeah, so I only watched two other titles. Um, one of which was a title called The Orange Man. Huh. And this is about um, four friends who, like, middle-aged friends who go out into the woods for, like, a camping excursion when one of their friends finds out that his wife is cheating on him with this, like, lame younger dude. They go out there. One of them's in a wheelchair. And uh, there's a killer who carries a bag of oranges around and starts picking people off one by one. It's completely ridiculous. It's a, it's a, it's an independent film, like as indie as they come. But the most bizarrest thing about this movie is like the cinematography and lighting are like that of like a mainstream like good movie. Hmm. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, honestly, this movie's fun. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's a fun little indie film. It's ridiculous. Like. The kills are stupid, and it like he's killing people with oranges and stuff. There's one where this like chubby chick like is running from him, and he's just welting her with oranges while she's like trying to get on a boat, and he's like throwing them from far away, and like just hitting her with them. And it actually looks like they're hitting this girl with real like oranges or like those little cuties or whatever they're called, and uh, she like fall, she like gets hit in the head once and like falls into the river and dies, which makes no sense, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty fun. There's like a seat, dude, there's a scene where the dude, the black dude's like peeing, he's in a wheelchair and he just like starts spraying all over the house and it's like point of view. It's just, <laughs> actually, I was surprised that this movie was pretty fun. Honestly, I thought it was going to be horrible. Yeah. Um, but I would own this and it reminded me of a fic pick that Mikey Fish would have gave because it's like exactly up his alley. He needs to check this out. Um, anyway. So I gave that one honestly like a six, dude. It's pretty good for what it is. Hmm. Um, and then the final film that I watched was Murder Lust, uh, which is these are all Patreon for Twenty Two Shots. So I'll, I'll be brief on them because you're gonna hear more about them on there. Um, but Murder Lust, I actually Dave, I remember hearing Dave, Mister Parker, watch this, and he recommended it. Um, and actually said that I should check it out. It's a 1985 movie. And instead of, you know, watching it online or trying to find it streaming or something, I just went and bought the DVD because I knew it was an intervision, which I like those anyway. Um, so I was like, you know, I'll just, I'm just going to not even, I'm not even going to test the waters. I'm just going to buy this thing. And I was actually very happy that I did because this might be one of the only gems of 1985. Hmm. Um, it's a, th that and Confessions of a Serial Killer, both gems. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> this is actually quite a good gem. It's a good, it's a good film. Uh, and the interesting thing about it, it's very similar to Confessions of a Serial Killer. <laughs> really? Yeah. It basically follows this, uh, dude, um, Steve, who is like mild mannered, like very clean cut. He's a teacher and a youth counselor at a church, but at night he's a sexual psychopath who murders prostitutes and dumps their bodies in the Mojave desert. Uh, mm -hmm. and it basically just follows this dude who is like, tr like basically Ted Bundy. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. he's basically Ted Bundy. He's like clean cut, nice dude on the surface, but he's like picking up girls and murdering them at night. Uh, and like, there's one scene where he picks up probably the most disturbing scene where he picks up this random girl walking down the road and he's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm a photographer. He's like, he's like, you, why don't you come with me? And well, you know, you, you're very pretty. Uh, I could, I could, you know, help you make some money modeling. And she's like, I don't know. I think I should ask my mom. He's like, you wait, you are 18, right? And she's like, we, she's like, yeah. And he's like, cause you gotta be 18 to do this. Like if you're not 18, like forget about it. 
And she's like, yeah, yeah, I'm 18, which seems like she was lying, so she might not have even been 18. Anyway, he takes her back to his crib, and he, like, pulls out a gun and force, forces her to give him, like, a, um, oral sex and then uh, basically murders her. So, uh, very disturbing scene. But, yes, great little gem. Loved it. It was awesome. Uh, I'm probably at, like, a 7.5 or an 8 on this one. And what's cool is this Intervision DVD, it was only 11 bucks. And it comes with the director's first feature film, Project Nightmare, as a bonus, which Intervision mm-hmm. does that sometimes. Um, so, yeah, Intervision is, uh, I believe it's owned by Severin Films, and it's, like, more for, like, the um, shot on video or, like, the films that they don't put on Blu-ray. Um, I own a couple of them. I would, like, I would love to pick up more Intervisions because I've pretty much enjoyed everything I've seen. Cool. Um. Yeah, so that was it for me. Just three. So I win. No, buddy. I win. Well, how many did you watch? Four. What? No. Hold on. I watched freaking seven. Whatever. Seven moves. All right. I win. Okay. Um. So, shall we get into our little bonus review of Onward now? Yeah, let's do it. So, yes, yeah, yesterday we were like, um, hey, let's just do some movie watching, right? We were just out and about. Actually, no, I just bought oh. the tickets and I was like, hey, I bought tickets to this movie in five minutes. Yeah, the, yeah. We that's were, a better way of putting it. We were at the mall and we were like, hey, let's, uh... I just bought tickets to a movie, and then I just told you that I did that. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, I didn't feel like I didn't have anything else to do, so why not? Yeah. So, uh, go ahead. Alright, so yeah, we saw um, a PG animated Pixar film called Onward. Um, Seems to be a pretty popular one one among people, so I was a little curious on it. So I'm glad we got to watch it, but um, basically this movie... It's a set in a suburban fantasy world. Two teenage elf brothers embark on a quest to discover if there is still magic out there. So essentially, the movie is about these two brothers. Um, one just turned 16. The other one's probably like, I don't know how old he's supposed to be, like 18, 19, 20, something like that. His older brother. Um, they live at home with their mom, and uh, you find out their dad had passed away uh, before the youngest brother was even born, and, um, you know, so he never got to meet him, and he's sad about that, and he turns 16, and the mom presents uh, both him and his older brother uh, with this gift that the dad had left them, saying when they're both 16 and up, they can have this presence, and um, it's like this <clears throat> magical... Uh, what do you even call it, like, wand stick thing of sorts, and uh, comes with, like, these instructions from the dad that say, like, uh, pretty much they can bring him back to life for a full 24 hours to spend the day with him, because he found this crystal thing that you put inside the sword, and it's magic. So, uh, uh, the oldest brother's trying it out, it doesn't work, and then the youngest brother tries, and he gets it to work because he apparently has the power, but he screws it up, and the dad comes back as only legs, and that is it, so obviously he can't talk or hear or see them, he is just legs. So they embark on this journey to try to find this other crystal, uh, that they can use to, you know, do the spell again, because you can only do it once, and, you know, get the rest of their dad to appear. So that is the story there. Um, and it's pretty much just sort of like an adventure tale. So what did you think of this move? Um, yeah, I I really liked it, dude. I was actually completely surprised. I thought that it was great. Um, I don't want to spend a ton of time on it just because it's not necessarily um, horror, you know what I mean? And most people listen to the show for horror, even though that's, you know, not double HMP. Yeah, it's double HMP. Um, it's not uh, triple HMP. Yeah. No. Uh, that would be his and her horror movie podcast. Sure would. Um, but yeah, so... 
um honestly dude like there was just a lot of funny moments to this film there was a lot of heart there was one point where i was like ah i knew this was gonna happen um i was actually like mad and it was like um it sets up the older brothers being kind of a slacker screw up and uh basically it's revealed that the younger brother feels that way about him too like the rest of the world does and I knew that it was going to be one of those moments where, um, at the, like towards the end of the film, he was like, you know what you like when everything was falling apart, he was going to be like, you know what? You are truly a screw up. And like, I actually do feel that way, blah, blah. And I was just like, cringe. Like, this is the most formulaic bowl ever. Like I hate, I knew I saw it coming a mile away and I was in cars like, come down. It's a Disney movie. And I'm like, yeah, but still, but then they, they totally redeemed themselves because they had the balls to pull off an ending that I didn't expect that they would. It was a powerful ending. Carly cried like a little girl. Dude, you were crying too. Don't even. I did not cry. Where? I looked over where? Where? and there where? was where? a. Where? 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 There was a tear. Where? Where was the deer? Where? I can't show. Where? You're not. I, I can't. I'm. I'm moving my face back and forth in like little <laughs> jolts, just so you can see. <laughs> Okay, where, you didn't cry. Where? Where? Uh, it was where, just... where? Okay, you're right. I cried. Yeah, you bawled. Baby. I didn't bawl. You're a little crybaby. No, buddy. I didn't. I swear. Yeah, you did. You were crying. I looked over and you're like... <laughs> For a second, and then I recovered, and then another sad part happened, and I looked over, and you were like... <laughs> where? That's noises. Um, In the eyeball. Like, in the left eyeball. No, you couldn't it. even see my left eyeball. Ball. I literally went out of my way to look at your eyeballs. Because <laughs> Dude, I, bull. Yes. I put my eyeballs up in your face. I was like, where? Where am I crying? Where? 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 <laughs> okay. Okay, you win. Exactly. You, win. you don't cry. I don't You're a cry. I'm, I'm a G. Yeah. All right, but, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I wasn't too shocked by this movie because I'm not a big fan of animated films or kid movies i never really was even as a kid all right well like i don't know dude i just like i guess i grew up too fast i never was super excited about them like other people but um pixar movies i find have always been pretty good the few that i've seen um you know i I did go to the theater and see the like movies like i saw up and you know monster house i think that's a pixar movie um that's about it. But I, so, you know, I, I'm not like a stranger to these types of movies and, um, I did like the ones I've seen. So I wasn't like when you said we were going to go see this, I wasn't like, Oh, cringe, but, um, I enjoyed it. I thought it had a lot of funny moments that made me laugh. Uh, that's one thing with these Pixar movies. They actually are really laugh out loud funny. And, uh, there were a few, not even a few, there was actually a lot of good comedic moments in this film that I really enjoyed and appreciated. Um, like JP said, the ending is sad. Uh, once again, Pixar always nails that. Uh, they're, Disney always nails that as well, where they have that one super heart-crushing moment at the end. And the way they did this was uh, definitely unique for, um, you know, an animated film, kids film. And I did appreciate that as well. Um, I do agree the there is that formulaic part to it. And... Um, I did kind of say, like, chill out about it as a Disney movie, but it does get old, and it is pretty cringeworthy because it's not effective is the problem. Like, you just know it's going to happen, and they always want it to be effective. Like, oh, my God, that is so sad. He thinks his brother's a screw-up. But you, it's obvious that's going to happen in the whole movie, even the way the brother looks. I'm looking at the poster right now. It's like his brother's, like, chubby, holding, like, a pop in his hand and dressed, like, sloppy so it's like one of those things where they make it super super obvious of a setup but besides that i think it's a really uh good fun uh heartwarming type of film that a lot of people probably would enjoy um you know for adults and kids together so i liked it i liked it a lot that's pretty much all i have to say so yeah, uh, there was some really funny moments to it. I actually didn't know anything about this movie. In fact, I didn't even know what it was until we sat down. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember seeing a trailer to this. I just was, like, bored yesterday, and I was like, dude, let's watch it. Let's go see a movie because we have the AMC Pass thing, and, and I try to see as many movies as possible because I don't want to waste that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So, yeah. Uh. 
I gave it an 8. I gave it 8.5. Nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, and that brings us into our featured review, right? Yes. Okay. So um, let me just say before we get into it that I was – I feel slightly misled with this film just because um, – Based on how I understood, I, what I read about this movie was that it was about a woman trying to stop her son from becoming the next school shooter. But it it's really not that. And honestly, like maybe I was just hoping it was that, because I've always said that um, you could really do a great horror film or you know thriller with the school shooter theme. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very. Uh, impactful um thing right now you know it's it's very shocking and stuff like that and um you could do it tastefully um you could do it not tastefully but i think that no matter what you really choose it's going to be impactful and powerful because of how important of an issue that is now i've seen a couple films that have done it um most of which were literally based on columbine so it's like kind of cheating um Zero hour, zero day. Uh, there was I can't remember what it was called. That that one was like a found footage version. Um, mm. Elephant was one. I've seen a couple based on the Columbine uh, shootings. Um, some better than others. Uh, I've liked them all, I think. But and then I think All American Bully was another one um, that I thought was going to be good that was um, Adrian Barbeau was actually in that not Adrian Barbeau Adrian King was in that one um, from Friday 2 it wasn't really good um, and that's all I could really think of but yeah so go ahead give a synopsis yeah Um, there's no synopsis post yet but uh, essentially This movie is um, about a mom who um, is convinced that her son has psychopathic tendencies and, um, you know, you kind of find it's kind of based on her past and uh, just certain things from the son's past as well. So uh, she gets the idea to pretty much uh, follow him around with cameras and put cameras all around the house and just uh, try to look in on his life and, you know, see if there's anything suspicious um going on with him um and the whole movie is pretty much uh you know in a way kind of like found footage slash internet e where it's like the mom filming on her cell phone or it's like security cameras in the house or then you also have uh like i said with the computer aspect uh it shows uh clicking on files whether it be the mom's files or the son's actual personal files of him with his friends so uh that's kind of how the movie is shot but um yeah it's essentially about a mom who is uh thinks is paranoid that her son's a psychopath based on certain ways he acts and certain things he has and uh the whole movie you're trying to see i think kind of thing is you're trying to see if like he actually is a psychopath or if his mom is just very paranoid so that's essentially the plot that I got out of this movie. Yeah. So what, yeah. What do you think of the film? Um, I don't know, dude. I, I honestly didn't love it. Like, I'm going to be straight up honest. I thought it was, like, pretty basic. Um, I thought it was overacted a little bit. Um, I thought the, I thought it was overwritten a little bit. And what I mean by overacted and overwritten is, I mean, that, um, the film is supposed to be like grounded in reality. There's nothing supernatural or anything weird that, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's grounded. Um, mm. so to me, it's not, it's not like intentionally over the top or anything. So for me, I just felt like some of the, like some of the stuff that the mother was doing was overwritten like i just feel like it it didn't ease us into it and i understand that some of these clips are taken you know extended periods apart and stuff but i just felt like she i just felt like there wasn't enough backstory for her actions um i felt like the kid was not developed enough as well um i feel like his stuff was overwritten um i 
I've seen. Look, I have a friend. I have friends. I have people who were like very, very bad teenage kids, and like they would just flip out on their moms and stuff. And it just like, I don't know. I, I've seen this in real life, kind of. So I, I don't know. I feel like it was just a little bit too. It was. It was almost there. Like it was very close to being realistic looking. Like there was one scene that I felt was really realistic where. Um, the kid is just like throwing a fit and like, you know, busting stuff behind the door. And it was kind of intense and like scary. Like you did feel like threatened, like nervous, like that he was going to like snap, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but I, I don't know. Maybe the casting was a little bit wrong too. Like I thought the casting for the kid was very, he looked very good. Like he reminded me of like a calm, one of the Columbine kids or something like that. But for what he was doing where he was, like, super mad about his PlayStation, it was almost, like, cringy. Like, dude, you're, like, 20 looking. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know. Like, it, I feel like for that um, thing, like, that device, like, he's mad about his PlayStation, I feel like he should have been a little bit younger. Um, I thought he fit the look of what I would want for a character like this, but that p- specific thing that they kept bringing up the PlayStation thing I just I couldn't see someone his age acting like that over the PlayStation yeah um you know I honestly I was uh, pretty into this movie from the start up until like uh halfway through not even halfway like almost towards the end when stuff kind of starts to play out at the end and then I was like uh, I don't really like how this played out but um I don't know, I thought it was uh, pretty realistic for my liking. Um, I see what you're saying about the kid, but I think like the thing with the PlayStation is just trying to show how he is uh, very controlling and very much just gets what he wants, and whenever something he's not getting what he wants, where he wants his PlayStation back and he keeps asking for it back, um, it just... Uh, you know, makes him more and more angry because he's not getting that thing that he wants, and he's kind of you know, not in control of that particular situation. So I think that's more what they're trying to convey with that. Um, the I think the casting is pretty good. Um, the mom, I know you said, like, her acting's a little wonky, but I kind of, I was kind of believing it. I thought she was um, playing, like, just a paranoid uh, person pretty well. And um, just the way she talked to the camera and how serious she would get. Uh, to me, it was realistic and scary, and you kind of felt bad for her but you also it kind of made you think like maybe she's the one who's crazy maybe her son is fine and she's like driving him insane like you know typical moms do and it's making him mad and violent so um i i kind of like that aspect to it i felt like it had a good dynamic that kept me interested where i'm kind of thinking how's this all going to play out is there going to be a big twist or something at the end and um you know, I like that. I like the way it's shot as well, where, you know, she's just going into his room and kind of exploring what he has. And she is finding rather disturbing things, like, in his room in their, uh, I believe, garage or basement or something. And um, so then you start thinking, like, oh, crap, maybe he is, you know, a bad kid. And then I do feel you do get some backstory, not necessarily with him, but just uh, her life and why she would think these things about him it's just all kind of a mental problem with her and um it could be something that's inherited with him so uh i feel like it's kind of i I, they could have done a little bit more with it but it works for me um what the the thing i just don't like is how it all does kind of play out at the end um i i started to find like the kid a little bit cringeworthy at times and uh just it gets a little bit over the top in my opinion uh with just when stuff kind of starts to hit the fan. And that's kind of my biggest problem with the film. So. Yeah. Um, it get, it gets over the top, you said? Yeah, like towards the end, I feel like it's just, it's like, oh, okay, full on craziness and unbelievableness and just, like I said, a little bit cringy at times with the way the kid's acting. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know. It, it, I honestly didn't like this movie, if I'm being yeah. honest. I, I wanted to like it. Like, I was hyped for this. Like, I thought it was going to be cool. Um, and 
I feel like there's kind of two ways you can go about it. Like, if you do this film, you could do it super simple and just make it more of, like, a commentary on, like, youth and, you know, their, like, uh, how, like, distracted and how much we don't control them. Or you can Mm -hmm. do it, like, in a realistic, like, dark way, like, a true look at, you know, like, the, the Dylan Claybolt and the other dude from Columbine, like, they had home videos of of footage of them and how they were acting and stuff like that and like you could have done that and did an actual film about a school shooter before they became a school shooter um and then the whole film you could have been like wondering if she was going to be able to stop him or not but i there was other stuff too that kind of bothered me like like i just didn't see the point of her documenting this well, she's trying to document it because... For other mothers, I know. But I'm just saying, like, if she thinks that her son is a real threat, like, call the police. No, dude. She's trying to document it because she has called, like, people on him before. And, like, I think she's trying to, like, get proof when, like, stuff all kind of... I know, I just wasn't buying something. it, though. I know, but, like, that's kind of her... Th- like, it, you kind of... She alludes to the fact that they have changed schools a few times and that she, like has put him in therapy and he always outsmarts the therapist and she's had enough of it because she mm-hmm. deals with him firsthand. So she's like, I know, I'm going to, I know, I know it is over the top. Like my mom, like your no one's mom would ever go to that length. So in that respect, I mean, they might, if they're crazy enough, but in that respect, it's not very realistic. So I do see what you mean there, but I think that was kind of her main thing as well as, you know, putting it on the internet for other mothers to see. But I think she really just wanted her own proof because she's tired of looking like the insane one and kind of her mother thinks that it might be all her because obviously her mother has dealt with an issue before. So that's kind of what I just get out I, of it. I don't know, dude. It I, it just didn't work for me. I, I, I can't really buy any of the stuff you just said. Yeah. It's just hard for me to get on board with it. Like, I, there were scenes that were good. Like, when he slams the laptop down on his grandma just because his mom was annoying me. Actually, you know what? I think me and this dude have a couple of the same tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. You do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can get really mad really fast. It's kind of funny. Hang up on grandmas. No, um, but, um... But, no. Uh, the, the, I don't know. It, it's... I liked certain things about it, but I, I think I overall just wanted it to be something else. And it could, didn't have to actually have, like, the school shooting element. I just think that it would have been cool because I, I find that stuff fascinating. And I think there was a movie that you could have made out of this and turned it into that. But even if it didn't have that, I would have just liked a more grounded end, ending and more, I don't know, like, more look into... It, it was like just surface level like he like there wasn't very many issues that he was actually having like besides getting mad at his mom and like slamming shit yeah I mean kinda, like what did he do what like what is she so mad at him for I mean yeah you don't really get any backstory on that you get clips of him though with his friends and like him being weird with his new friends and like they're asking him questions on his past and stuff and he's not really answering and he's getting angry so you kind of get that and then like it's off there's like an illusion that he cuts himself that type of stuff so he does like disturbing behavior but um yeah you don't get any backstory on really like, what he did in the past so that is kind of annoying because it's just making it seem once again it's just making it seem like the mother is par- overly paranoid and crazy yeah like um and they even try to play that up like is it all is it all her you know mm-hmm. what i mean but and they- i i yeah i mean i like that dynamic and that's kind of why towards the end what all happens at the end i'm kind of i don't like that cuz i feel that, i don't know they it felt like they were trying to do some twisty turny stuff and then towards the end it just goes so over the top and tries to almost be more of a horror movie than a grounded in reality type of film and I uh, just that didn't sit right with me so alright um, so let's go into ratings here uh, from our reviews it sounds like um, we both found it interesting you liked it I didn't really 
like it, you know. And I always feel bad mm-hmm. whenever I get one of these for review, and I don't like it because I almost feel like, hey, do these people even want me to, <laughs> you know, post this or what, you know? So, um, yeah, go ahead, you you first. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely liked it more than you. Uh, I like I said, it kept me interested it was one of those ones where it runs like an hour and 38 minutes i believe and i kept checking the time not because i wanted it to be over but because i was like oh i feel like this movie can't possibly be over yet and i'm like oh crap there's only 20 minutes left and i'm kind of wanting more but then when you get into that final act i'm i was about done with it so uh, i'm a little mixed on that aspect but overall i thought it was good um i think they had some good stuff there i think it could have been executed a little bit differently um and like you said you were definitely misled with it by the whole school shooting thing but uh that didn't bother me too much i also wanted it to be more that way but when i kind of sat back and just took it in for what it was i was fine with it so i give it a seven out of ten a seven out of ten huh Uh uh-huh Um, okay, so let me think. I didn't really care for it that much. I thought it was okay. Um, 5.5. Dang. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Well, you know. Um, all right, let's head on over. I wanted to start doing this. Um, I, I just thought it would be a cool, um, bonus thing here. Uh, so, let's see here, uh, on Letterboxd, um, we have a couple of reviews, it's pretty interesting, um, we have two two and a half star reviews, uh, a one three star review, um, three three and a half star reviews, and two four star reviews, or four, or three and a half star, I don't know, it's hard to tell, (laughs) um, alright, so... Let's see. Let's go with this one. Uh, Brett Arnold, who comes in around where I did at two and a half stars out of five. Uh, we need to, to keep talking about Kevin. It's timely and it's a it's a timely and relevant pitch. Watching the radicalization of white supremacist in style of found footage horror flick. The mom angle would be more intriguing, though, if we need to talk about how Kevin didn't exist. Have you seen we need to talk about Kevin? No. <laughs> Me neither. Uh, most of this movie is just the mom talking to the camera and justifying the footage she's shooting of her psychopathic son who believes, who she believes will be a school shooter based on tons of evidence. Exclamation point. I feel like he's being facetious. <laughs> uh, it's great that it highlights the inadequacies of U.S. health care and justice system that exacerbate the problem, but it's so overtly handled that the impact is blunted. It also touches on the type of behavior if... Jesus, why do I suck so bad today? It also touches on if this type of behavior is genetic in a not-so-meaningful way. It's all told instead of shown. This a no budget movie which wouldn't matter if the script and performances were top notch neither are it caught co- it coasts on its really great premise and is certainly watchable but never lives up to it to it there are no surprises to be had it unfolds exactly as you, you would expect reading the log line better on paper than execution but i've seen worse i kind of agree with most of what he said um so I would like to sort of point out, and that that was from Brett Arnold on Letterbox. I would like to maybe do a review or two um, mm-hmm. for our featured reviews. I just thought that would be kind of an interesting uh, thing to bring to the yeah. table. Um, so uh, next week when we do The Hunt, uh, maybe you could find a review. Uh, I would like to do one positive and one negative. Mm -hmm. Um, and not that long. That's about as long as I would want to go, but I would do another one, like a positive one, but the only positive one there is really long. (laughs) And the other one is the other negative one. There is spoilered. Mm -hmm. So there's, uh, three total reviews on Letterboxd right now. Cause like I said, this film isn't out yet. Um, but yeah, so 
that's kind of it here. Um, I think that I think the one thing that he was saying about the genetic aspect of it was um, something that I didn't really like about the film. Um, this is a film, um, and I was wondering where it was going to go. Is it nature or nurture? Mm-hmm. Um, and right away we get that it's nature. Um, so in the case of uh, Columbine, I mean, that was a bullying situation. These kids might have had like an inherent evil to them to go to this length, but um, for the most part, they were shunned by the world. So that they, it was almost like they were, you know, natured into this thing. This could have, this was honestly the complete opposite. The mother even says like he has friends, like he's very likable, everybody likes him. So it was a, it was going with the pure nature aspect instead of nurture. Which I think I said that wrong a second ago, but um, yeah. What do you do? You have any opinions on that? You mean like? Do you mean like nurture? Are you saying it wrong? Like nurture is the problem with this kid because his mom's crazy? No, it's nature with him. Oh. But I'm saying it. It could have been nurture. Yeah, I mean, um, I feel like. I don't know. I feel like it is nurture because I feel like it's you feel like it's his mom's fault why he's like this no I just like his nature he's like normal in school and he's not really being yeah no on. that would be that would be nurture if if the, he's nurture is where you're shaped by the stuff around you nature is you're born that way like it's in you genetically really yeah, like nature. It's your nature. Like Michael Myers is in the original Halloween. His nature is evil. He wasn't nurtured that way. In Rob Zombie's films, he was nurtured into being evil. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I just, I guess, I confused those two. Yeah, like so. The 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 mom is saying that he's naturally evil. That's nature. Yeah. Like it's genetic. He's naturally evil because everything around him is good so if it was nur- if it was nurture then he if he wouldn't it wouldn't work because his he has friends he's likable blah blah, blah. you mm. know what i'm saying now yeah, if okay, you're making yeah. the argument that the nurture came from his mother and she nurtured him into being evil then i could see what you, i understand yeah I, okay yeah that doesn't make sense then i mean i just like thought uh, I don't know. I guess it is nature then. Because uh, my thing was like maybe his mom, because his mom had that bad experience when she was young. And maybe she like, obviously she keeps trying to get him locked up into freaking mental institutions and stuff. And is probably making him crazier and crazier. But at the same time in the movie, it's clear that he actually has his own underlying mental problem, like anger issue problem. So... I guess it would be more. Well, I think that it's apparent from the early scene where the he um, is a child, and they're like, "Did you do that on purpose?" And he's like, "What's on purpose mean?" And you know what I mean. I don't. I don't. What did he kill like a uh, birds or something? I don't. I don't remember what it was, but you know that early scene in the movie. Was that hit? I was thinking that was her brother as a child. Oh really? I thought. I think the. I don't know. I get. I was getting confused because I thought they were showing scenes of like her brother Jerry, and then also scenes of him when well, he that, was little that, too. Again, well, that also is making it seem like it's genetic. Well, yeah, yeah. So Sweet. nature. Um, anyway, I've always loved the nature versus nurture uh, debate. I think when it comes to school shooters, um, I think that a lot of it is nurture. I think that it, a mm. lot of it has to do like with, you know what happened to them but I think that like I don't think that everybody's capable of doing that like for example if you took somebody like me and put me in the exact same situations as those kids I wouldn't have became a school shooter um but so it is nature to to a certain extent and it's nurture to a certain extent I think it's a, a combination of both Mm-hmm. Uh, for for me, I've always thought that way, and that's why I like Rob Zombie's Halloween so much. Is because it takes the nature of Michael Myers being evil, 
but it also adds the nurture in the expanding upon the evil and unleashing it from the nurture side of things. That's why I like Rob Zombie's the best. Yeah. Um, anyway, that is it for the episode. Yeah. We are out of here. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you next week with The Hunt and the week after with A Quiet Place 2. Until then, I hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out. Peace.